Stop waiting for your future to happen. Master the AI workflows that turn static dreams into living, breathing proof. See your success in 2026 before it even exists. Design the career, the lifestyle, the feeling. Don't just visualize it, create it. Welcome to the course. Welcome back to Module 4 of Open Arts Creative AI course for absolute beginners called Dream Big with AI, where you're creating a video that shows you experiencing something that you'd really love to have happen in 2026. It can be anything. You could acquire something you've always wanted. Go on a dream vacation. Have that ideal relationship. Go on the ultimate adventure. It's totally up to you. And in Module 1, we showed you how to create images where you were the star. And in Module 2, we showed you how to add emotional layers to those images and make changes changes using external reference images. Finally, in the last module, we started to bring things to life using a technique called start and end frames, where the AI interpolates action that takes place between different images, and that allows us to guide with precision exactly where we want the animation to go. And your homework for the last module was to take some of the before and after images that we created in module two and bring them to life using any of the models on the open art platform that support start and end frames so that you can see that transformation for yourself. In this module, we bring it all together and export that final version of your dream vision in action for 2026. But before we do that, I'm going to show you two more ways you can create your video, and I'm going to show you how you can extend the length of your video basically indefinitely so that you can tell a more complete story. And then finally, using myself as an example, I'm going to quickly go through all the techniques we've covered in the course to recreate from scratch a moment that I'd like to have happen in 2026 so you can see exactly what I'm doing and duplicate it for yourself. Let's talk about a couple of other ways where we can bring our vision to life. Life. We've learned about using start and end frames, and we've learned how to create those end frames. But what if we don't have an end frame or we don't need an end frame? That goes back to the technology that we talked about before called image to video, where you don't have an end frame that's going to tell the AI exactly where to land. You'll need to give it a prompt and let the AI creatively decide what that last frame is going to be. You'll recall in our last example for start and end frames, we had this image of this woman getting ready to present an Oscar, and then we had this image of me having the Oscar and holding it up over my head victoriously and we use the start and end frame technology to create this. The Oscar for Best Actor goes to Bob Doyle. Thank you so much. So how might we do something similar if we were only using one image? Now, obviously, if the scenario was that I was receiving an award from this woman, I would have to be in the starting picture. So here we're just using the image of me holding the trophy up over my head. And here I would prompt, woman announces Bob Doyle is the winner of the Oscar for the best actor in a web tutorial. And the man in the blue and purple tuxedo accepts the award and gives a hilarious acceptance speech. And since I'm using a model that generates audio, we're actually going to get something out of my mouth on this one. So there's Bob Doyle as the winner of the Oscar for best actor in a web tutorial? Mi leggi la compension. When it did it save the tour. Per fena un davvero. I haven't checked it to see if those were real words or just AI gibberish or not. But of course, where this video ends is completely random because we weren't having that guided by an end frame. So now let me introduce you to one of the techniques that allows you to extend your original video. If I wanted to extend this video, what I could do is take this last frame of the video and use it as a start frame for the next video. And then that way there'd be that continuity. Open Art makes this very easy because when you view any of the videos here and you access this interface, you can choose grab frame to video and from the drop down list, just choose grab last frame. That automatically throws that last frame back into the interface ready for a new prompt where you can continue that animation. Now, of course, it will create a separate animation, which you can then join together and add music to in OpenArt's online video editor. Let me show you. We've got this last frame sitting here from the previous video, and now we can change the prompt and say the man suddenly starts spinning around like a crazy person as the startled woman backs away and the man throws the trophy towards the camera and runs away. Choose the length that we want and just click on create. That's going to give us this. I'm just kidding. This is for you guys. <gasps> Though, silly. But now we've got these two videos that we want to join together as one. So we can pop over here to Story and then choose Open Editor. It's going to default into the timeline mode, which is exactly what we want. At that point, we can just add the two videos from our history. So we click on History, and we're going to choose the first video, and then this follow-up video, and click on Confirm. Once they're uploaded, you just drag them onto the timeline in order. And we can tell by the images which is first. So just drag it down, 
and then I'm going to take the other one and drag it over to the right and it's going to say insert after, drop it, and now I can just play the whole thing continuously. So there's Bob Doyle as the winner of the Oscar for Best Actor in a Web Tutorial. I'm just kidding. This is for you guys. The other way we have not yet talked about in terms of generating video is text to video, which was actually the first technology that came onto the scene, but back then it required much more sophisticated prompting than it does now. The models are much more intelligent. So let's say I wanted to create a scene for this video of mine, but it didn't need me in it. Maybe it was B-roll or an establishing shot, which is what I'm going to create here. To prompt with text to video, I'm in the video section here on Open Art, and I've chosen the text tab, and now I can choose whatever model I want, just like before. In this case, I'm going to say C Dance 1.5 Pro, and the prompt is very simple. The camera pushes in on a home in a suburban neighborhood on a sunny morning. So now I have this that I can use as an establishing shot for the rest of my project. Now we know the various ways we can create our video assets. So let's tell our story. Today, my future vision for 2026 is walking out to the mailbox, pulling out a package from YouTube, opening it up, and getting a silver plaque congratulating me for reaching 100,000 subscribers. That's a legit goal I have for this year. It's something I'm emotionally connected to, and so this is meaningful to me, as your project should be meaningful to you. So to tell this story completely, we're going to create a series of videos that we're going to string together like I showed you before, and we're going to use the start and end frame technique to do that. So we need to create the keyframes that tell the story that then we join using that technique that we learned before. And it's so fun and simple to do in open art. Let me show you how we do it, starting with creating the images. I'm here in the image creation module of OpenArt. I've chosen the C-Dream 4.5 model and I've dragged in an image reference picture of myself. The prompt is, man is standing by a large mailbox in a suburban neighborhood. I've chosen my output settings to be 16.9 aspect ratio. That gets me this image here. Next, I want to have a picture of me holding the package from YouTube that I pulled out of the mailbox. So from my history, I just pull in the image that I chose from the generation before that I liked. And I went online and I found a picture of what this package looks like. And this one had had all the address stuff marked out and all that. And I used the techniques that we talked about in module two to edit the images just with natural language. That way I was able to get rid of the label I was able to change the address to Bob Doyle Media. I was able to get rid of all of the black marks. So now I have a nice clean version of this package. And I did a very similar thing to create this plaque. I found an image of the plaque and I just changed to it was four to me. So now back in the image creation area, I've combined the picture of me by the mailbox with the image of the package. And I say the man has opened the mailbox and is holding the package in image two, looking at it with excitement. And there I am. The package, just as I created it. It even says Bob Doyle Media, Las Vegas, Nevada. The next thing I want is a picture of me tearing the package open and finding the plaque. So again, from history, I choose the image I want the next image to be based on. In this case, it's this one. And then a picture of the plaque. And the prompt is, close up, the man has torn open the package and pulled the silver plaque out of the package and is looking down on it with a look of humility we still see the neighborhood in the background. So now we've got this, and again, all the detail is there in the plaque, it's just pretty freaking amazing. <laughs> So in terms of the video, my vision next was for the camera to move around from that shot to an over the shoulder shot of me looking at the plaque. To create that image, I used the same two starting images I just did, but the prompt says over the shoulder close up shot of the plaque being held by the man. This is exactly what I wanted. Then I wanted the camera to pull back and reveal that a bunch of neighbors have come out with a banner congratulating me on my 100,000 subscribers. Because I wanted all the details from my face and I didn't need the black package in there, I went back to this original image of me standing by the mailbox as one of the reference images, and then I forced the plaque as the other. The prompt is, close up of man is holding the plaque with an emotionally moved expression as a crowd of neighbors have gathered around holding a banner that says, congratulations, 100K and are cheering. Don't I have a great community? Now I'm playing up the emotional reaction here because as I've said as we've gone through this whole course, if you're here to really learn cinematic techniques, doing something that evokes or communicates emotion is gonna be crucial if you wanna be able to maintain people's interest. Special effects and goofy stuff will only hold them for so long, but if you wanna tell a story, there has to be an emotional arc, so I'm really pushing it and playing it over the top for this particular example, especially in the next shot where I want to get right in on the face and I want some tears of joy and all that stuff going on as I'm holding the plaque right up by my face. I use the picture of standing in front of the crowd along with the plaque, of course, so we can maintain all of those details. It says, close up of the man's face, happy, and holding back tears of joy as he holds the plaque and image two up by his face to display it. 
I actually ended up getting this image, which this does not work for me. So I just brought this image right back in as a reference and said, remove the YouTube logo from the man's head and show a blue sky in the background because before it was just kind of white back there. And now we've got this that we can use as an end frame for the entire video. So now you can see we've got all the visual elements to tell the story in order. And now we just use the start and end frame technique that you've already mastered to create all these clips that then will join together. Once you get the technique I'm gonna show you, you can quickly get all these generations going because the open art platform allows you to do multiple generations at a time. So let's go over to the video section. Then we'll click on image to video. We can choose any of these models we want that support start and end frame. I encourage you to experiment. I'm gonna be using Kling 2.6 for the entirety of this because it really does do a great job of starting end frames. So the first order of business though is to connect this video of the establishing shot of the house to the first image of me standing by my mailbox so that I can walk out of the house and go to the mailbox. So in order to do this, we're gonna have to get an end frame from this video to be the start frame of the next one. Don't get confused, watch. We're gonna open this up and now we can click on grab frame to video and we're gonna click on grab last frame. Just like before, it's going to automatically put that image in as the start frame of our animation. Now what we want is for the man to walk out of the house to the mailbox. So we're going to click on end frame here. We're gonna to go to our history and we're gonna scroll down to the image that we want of him standing by the mailbox, which is this one here. Now we prompt it, the door opens and the man walks out of the house and walks to the mailbox. Now because that's a pretty big action to go from the front door all the way out to a mailbox. I'm going to give it 10 seconds to complete this task. And here's what we get. Door opens. He walks with intention to a mailbox. It's magic, my friends. And there he is. So that is the start and end frame animation that gets us this first segment of our video. Now this frame where he's standing by the mailbox is going to be the start frame of our next video. We can easily make that happen by clicking these two arrows here. It simply reverses what is in start and end frame. So now when we click on start frame, me standing by the mailbox is the start frame. Now we wanna choose a second end frame. So we scroll down in our history and we find the picture of me holding the package outside the mailbox. Then we give it the prompt, man opens the mailbox, pulls out the package, looks at it for a second, and then gets super excited and holds it up. So now he opens the mailbox, the package kind of zips out magically, and he's excited and he holds it up. So now that last frame is gonna become the first frame of the next segment. See how this works? So now I'm just gonna click reverse, click on start frame to confirm that that has now become the start frame. And now the next in frame I want is me having torn into the package. So I click on in frame, I just click up here, go to history, scroll down, find the picture I want, and confirm. Then I give it the prompt as the camera pushes in, the man tears open the package, revealing the plaque. So he tears open the package, revealing the plaque. Now you'll notice I'm only giving it five seconds to do these actions. We don't need to draw this out or be really awkward. Now we want to switch this again so that this becomes the start frame of the next video. And now the next end frame is going to be the over the shoulder shot of me looking at this plaque. So again, I choose end frame, click on history, scroll down and choose the image I want. Click on confirm, and the prompt is the camera dollies around the man for an over-the-shoulder view of the plaque. And here we go. Nice reflections and everything. So once again, we flip these images, and our next end frame is going to be the shot of all the neighbors with the banner. So now with this image as the new start frame, we click on end frame, we'll go down to history, scroll back to the neighbor picture we want, and click confirm. And the prompt is the camera dollies to the front of the man as he shows the plaque to the camera and we see a crowd of cheering neighbors holding a banner in the background. So he turns and the neighbors come in with their banner and they're cheering. Finally, it's time for the big emotional push. We're gonna flip these images again and the last end frame of this video will now be that close up of me with the tears in my eyes. Either one of these works. So now this is the start frame. This is the end frame. Camera slowly pushes in on the man who holds up the plaque as he gets a little emotional with joy. Pushes in as he loses it emotionally and the whole world melts away as he just basks in the glow of 100K. So now we have all of our video clips. We gotta put them together in order like we did before. We're gonna click on story. We're gonna click on open editor. We're in the timeline mode. We're gonna click on add, go to history, and we can just choose all of our videos that made up our sequence. Click on confirm. And now once again, we just drag them onto the timeline in order. So there's the opening of the house. Drag that on there. Then I've walked to the mailbox and zoom out a bit. Next is pulling it out of the mailbox, then opening it, then the over the shoulder shot, drag this one, and then finally the tear shot. So now let's run it from the beginning and see how it all flows together. So here we're about to come up to the last clip and now we just move right into the next one.
turns, there's the supportive neighbors, and then finally, get out those hankies, Bob. And there you go. So now we've got all the video there. We're going to put one last finishing touch on it, and that's a little music track. Now to do that, you're going to click on the little music icon here. You have an option of uploading your own music if you have something that means something to you or that you did that you have the rights to. You can certainly do that. In our case, we're just going to pop into their library that they have here. You can search through it or just scroll through and find something you like. All right, we'll go with this one, Feeling Light. We'll just check that. If you wanted to add any other images or any other video, you could do that now. But right now, we're just going to go to music, and there's Feeling Light that we chose. We just click it, and we drag it right onto the timeline where we want it. And now when we click play, it will have the music along with it. You've created your video. Now all you have to do is export it so you can share it or view it on your own system or whatever you want to do with it. To do that, you just go up to share and click on download. You click on download MP4 and now it's ready to view. So there you have it. You may have gone from absolutely zero knowledge about AI tools, creative or otherwise, and now you know how to create cinematic masterpieces that are truly only limited by your imagination. We've showed you the basic essentials to create any image that you can imagine, and we've showed you not only how to bring them to life, but to connect them together to tell a full story. We really hope that you have gotten great value from this course, especially if you're a beginner and that you learn some skills that excite you and inspire you to go even further down this road. We have more training modules to come, and if you have any content that you'd like covered, if there's anything in particular you'd like to learn more about, we want to hear from you on that. We are here to help you realize your creative storytelling vision. And anything we can do to help you do that, we are on board. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you soon.